Welcome to the Producers Journal Podcast, presented to you by SRP Studios, a digital content production agency. This is my platform to discuss my experiences as a podcast producer and agency owner. Follow me on Facebook at SRP Studios and Instagram at SRP Studios LLC. Do you want to create impactful digital content? Do you want content that will increase your reach and exposure? Well, go to ShelbyRoyalProductions.com and schedule a free consultation to discuss affordable options. And we're sponsored by, in part, by Patreon. Support the podcast by subscribing to my tip jar. It's $1 a month. Click the Patreon link in the description for more information. What's going on? Good to be back. Feeling motivated. Wanted to uh, get on the microphone this evening. Was in the mood. So um, so now I want to talk about a really cool experience that I had this past weekend as I record this. I'm not going to get into the timeline fiasco, uh, but uh, in present time and published time will be different. But as I record this, just... Uh, Two days ago, three days ago, uh, the Rhythm Section podcast uh, went mobile, and we had a booth at the Mississippi Music Awards show. Uh, Every year, this was the seventh annual uh, award show, and they have it in South Haven, Mississippi at the Landers Center, and it's obviously the spotlight local music and uh it's actually pretty regional but uh there's a lot of americana blues jazz uh, a lot of christian categories very 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 independent but very well put together um so what i want to do in this episode is run through it a little bit you know in a way tell the story and share the story with you and how it all happened but also As the producer, anyone listening that's interested in that side of things as well, uh, we're going to be talking about how I researched and how I planned for this and in in part of the story. So you're going to learn a little bit there too as far as learning from my experiences. Hence, the name, The Producer's Journal Podcast. So uh, the Mississippi Music Awards... Uh, was on April, let me look up the date, April 22nd. And I somehow got connected to the head producer and host. Uh, Short Trail was starting with my friend Chad Wicker, who's an alderman here in Hernando and hosts uh, co-hosts a podcast called The Boardroom that is produced and recorded here at SRP Studios. And he introduced me to a gentleman by the name of TJ Cates. Uh, I do a little research on TJ and quickly realized that he is a uh, pretty, pretty talented, successful person in the world of media and digital. Uh, he's worked for TMZ. He he, uh, him, he and his wife own a little indie label in Nashville. Uh, it's TV shows. It, it's, I still don't quite understand everything he does. He's such a character. Uh, so I immediately knew that this gentleman needed to be in my studio. So I hounded him for a month every week, throwing out a text. He was always nice, always willing to you know, try to work something out. But he was always so busy, and with each text, he was telling me what he was doing, and it would be something in Nashville, and then doing something in Atlanta. Just craziness, but I knew that I wasn't going to give up on him. So I finally texted him again. Not finally. I just texted him again, like I had been for weeks. Uh, And he responded with, maybe next week. Uh, but this is what I'm doing right now, you know, in a very nice way. He's just like sharing it with me. Well, this time he sends me a picture and the picture is of the Lander Center marquee sign. And on there is, uh, the music awards logo and everything. It's getting promoted. It's on the screen. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. I mean, you're a part of that too. 
Come to find out, he tells me he's the head producer, owner, not owner, but head producer, host, but the man that puts it on, the man in charge. I'm like, man, that's cool. And without asking, prompting, just out of nowhere, out of left field, he just offered me a press booth, me and Jeff, the podcast, the Rhythm Section podcast. And uh, the rest is history. Of course, I said yes immediately to that. (laughs) And got Jeff on board with it, and um, and there you go. And now we can start with the process. First step was um, connecting with his wife. His wife Jill was the other co-producer, um, and she was the probably more of the organizer because I quickly connected with her. She reached out to me, and we started organizing uh, or talking about what we could possibly do. So I got on the phone with her, and. and told her how it would probably work, you know, how I'd be set up, how I would be able to capture audio and video very simple, uh, in a very simple way. And uh, we're trying to figure out how long I'll be there, how, you know, is it an hour, 90 minutes, what time, you know. So find out that there's a, a red carpet that's going to feed people to an end of a hallway, and then it's going to circle them back around to the main gala. Well, I set up the podcast station at the end of the ribbon cutting. So we were right there. Everyone could see us, and it was a cool presentation. So uh, I'm a stickler with that. Um, So, you know, I get OCD too. But uh, because of the ribbon cutting I had, I have all of these really cool presentational assets, I'll call them, like 17 by 11 inch foam boards with my logos on it each each entity has its own little board with easels to to put them on and um, qr codes and business cards and just ways to present the brand uh so we kind of set up in the corner i had a uh as a uh, the rhythm section podcast logo up on a tall easel behind us and then we had some some logos on the you know the left end of the table where I was sitting and then across the table or going down the table we had some shirts and hats kind of you know uh placed respectfully and tastefully to show that we do have merch but it wasn't like a merch table um so that was important to me making it look professional was important to me uh and then the I knew that in order for this to work I needed someone to kind of help me get people over there, not knowing who, but I knew that I was going to need help. Well, after telling this to Jill, she then mentions that she has a handful of uh, bands that are on her label. Again, her and her husband, TJ, own an indie label in Nashville. And they had four artists up for awards. And then other artists that they knew and had worked with and uh, knew that, They would like to get them some spotlight. So I told her, look, line them up. You you choose who you want interviewed and line them up for me. And within days, I got this cool schedule with 17 names on it. (laughs) And, you know, interview one, three o'clock. Interview two, 305. In a right five minutes. And honestly, that's what I told her. I'm like, look, it's going to be five minutes per. That way we can just push them out. Uh, so that's the idea I gave her and she liked it again, sent me that schedule and then also gave me like a cool spreadsheet with all these guests and then their website and, uh, the awards that they were being nominated for and just gave me everything I need to prep for now the interviews, the research. So that is the next part I want to break into is, you know, preparing for interviews uh anyone that watches the rhythm section podcast you kind of feel the format we have there me and jeff have our own thing on the front end and we prep in a certain way uh the real hernando podcast different animal i prep in a completely different way this podcast is i wrote six bullet points in front of me and then i riff and just ramble um but this is a different situation i need to be on top of this because how do we talk to someone for three to four minutes and get anything out of it. So you have to do some serious research. 
you know, you don't ask where they're from. You say, I see you're from Texas. Those types of things. Uh, so I went through every one of them and just went to their website, instantly tried to find a bio. The first thing you do is just try to find a bio. It's not, if they don't have anything really good on the website, then find their Facebook page. Uh, just try to find something. Uh, that's key. And then I will literally copy and paste from the website and just in lines, not a whole paragraph, but just, ooh, that looks like a, you know, it's, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to mumble here, but it will be a, a paragraph talking about the person, talking, 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 and, and then released first single on May 5th, 1982. That gets copied and pasted. Um, where they're from, who their influences are. Just try to mine through and find these little these little shiny moments in their bio. Copy and paste it to a sheet. Five, six, seven of them. That's it. You're in. Uh, and then I made sure each interviewer or inch, either interview uh, had its own one pager, as it's called. So right at the top of the page was the person's name, uh, the band, if they were in the band, what they were nominated for, and then bullet points based on them. Uh, and I spent a couple days going through each person, digging and mining. Some were easier than others. Uh, there were a few that were pretty shocking at how bad their presence is. No website, Facebook page has no bio in it, uh, three posts a year, you know. <laughs> uh, so with those ones, you kind of just rest on sitting down and starting a conversation. So that's how I prepared for it. And, and thank God I did, because then we started recording, uh, and they started lining up, and the way I had the recording, I had my normal three camera setup facing the, the long table. But uh, me and Jeff were each on these Rode wireless mics that mount into like a, a microphone stick that go into the microphone stand. And so it just looks like a wireless microphone. So each and I had, we each had one of those on each end. And then I had two chairs in between us, each with a lapel going into a, a Zoom H6. Uh, that way it would be so easy. Someone could just sit down uh, and then I just clip on their shirt in because I knew that once I hit record on everything, record on the mics me and Jeff are using, the Zoom recording and three cameras, they're not stopping. I got everything plugged in. I got plenty of S uh, space on my SD cards. They're not turning off. That's why you take edit notes. So soon as uh, the first person sits down, you write the timestamp down. And then I, to my right, had my iPad perched up facing me only and pulled up the watch app and went to the timer setting. And anytime I started a new, ep you know, new interview, I would hit that, and that was my timer. And rapid fire, just trying to get all the important stuff uh, in three and a half minutes. And I did that. And we completed 18 interviews in 90 minutes. Now, earlier I said 17. Well, here's an 18th one. So sidetrack a little bit, sidebar, if you will. Leading up to this, I get connected to a gentleman by the name of Dave Young. And Dave Young is a uh, alderman in Horn Lake, Mississippi, very involved in the Mississippi Music Foundation, and hence the award show. And I met him because he could was going to potentially set me up with interviewing the person that's receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award. The person receiving that award is Ricky Medlock. Anyone that doesn't know, Ricky Medlock has been with Skinnerd for over 30 years, 35 years, and founded a band called Blackfoot. Legendary dude. Legendary. He actually lives out here. He lives in Olive Branch, Mississippi, probably 30 minutes from me. I don't know where his house is, but I'm just saying, Olive Branch is 30 minutes from me. Well, apparently, 
this alderman in Horn Lake is the gatekeeper for uh, Ricky Medlock. You know, Ricky Medlock is famous. I mean, if you don't know who he is, then you don't know Skinner, right? And, but Dave's super nice, really cool guy, and he and I connect, and uh, he just had some questions. What's this all about? What are you doing? You know, so I told him about the Rhythm Section podcast, told him about The Real Hernando, told him about my studio, just really just sold myself (laughs) on him. Uh, It didn't hurt to tell him that I'm on the board of directors of the Hernando Chamber. You know, he's an alderman. I'm a on the board of the chamber. I'm not in politics, but that helps. That's why I was so happy to get that opportunity. It really then jumped the credibility and trust. Uh, So he was like, yeah, we'll get this set up. Uh, I just need to give more, you know, uh, Ricky Medlock needs information. He likes to know what's going on before he runs into something, which I get because he's getting pulled in five different directions every day, all day. Um, <clears throat> but he's like, so look, let me set it up and we'll, we'll, we'll feel it out. Uh, but I think, and this is him talking, he said that he's like, I think it would be cool if you really did a full interview with him in your studio. I mean, that would be better, right? <laughs> of course it would be. Mr. Young. So we hang up, um, and I'm on the phone all day, all morning with this. Meanwhile, having to load up and pack gear, which I'm going to have to leave for another episode. I wanted to get into that, but this is getting too long because I'll end it with Ricky Medlock. So we are in the middle of an interview, I would say the eighth one, and boom, coming out of the door is Dave Young with an earpiece in. (laughs) And then right behind him, Ricky Medlock, and then more security. And he just floats in in front of us and interrupts the interview, but not in a rude way. He just rolls up. Hey, fellas, what's going on? He's looking at our hats. He's like, this is really cool. He didn't care that we were in the middle of an interview. It wasn't in a douchey way. It was in a famous guy way, which I was all about. I was like, what's going on, man? I stand up. I shake his hand. Jeff shakes his hand. Uh, (laughs) And it's probably 60 seconds that we're just sitting there talking to him while he's standing in front of us on the other side of the table. And and then I had this awkward moment where I had to be like, okay, Ricky, man, I'll I'll get to you in three minutes. (laughs) I I didn't want to have to say that, but I didn't want to, you know, be rude to the gentleman that we were interviewing and so i then i told his people i was like he's next don't worry he's next they're like okay great 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 so they were cool about it but it was weird that i had to kind of push the celebrity to the side all right man i'll get to you in a few minutes you just gotta stand over there you know <laughs> but it kind of came out that way he didn't take it that way it didn't sound awful everyone was on the same page as me we, you know because there's a line of people waiting to be on this podcast like five people deep at all times throughout this whole thing, one after another. Anyway, so we sat with Ricky for three, four minutes. It was great. So nice. So generous with, you know, with just talking. You, you could have asked him anything. But he also has done it before. He's, he's a pro. He's, how many interviews do you think he, he's given? So he sat down and, and, you know, I didn't have to work a whole lot. He, he talked. <laughs> Uh, he said what he wanted to say, which was amazing. Um, and then uh, it went well, and then he just vanished, disappeared. And the next time I saw him was when he was on the stage receiving his award, and that was it. But looking pretty good that he's going to be in the studio. Really excited about that. That would be just insane for the podcast, the Rhythm Section podcast, that is. And it's always good to have foot traffic in the studio. So it certainly doesn't hurt to have a musician like Ricky Medlock in my podcast studio, who, by the way, lives 30 minutes from here. Like I said earlier, he's relatively speaking, he's a neighbor. So it's like, maybe, you know, we can become best friends and hang out, you know, and get free guitar lessons. (laughs) You know, I'd give him the lessons, of course. 
Be sure to follow me on Facebook, SRP Studios, and on Instagram at Shell Bureau Productions. No, that's wrong. That's not right. It's changed. Instagram is at SRP Studios LLC. Go ahead and click that Patreon link. Join that tip jar. Click that link tree. Find all the places that you can find this thing. It's on YouTube. It's on Apple. It's on Spotify. Don't forget, this is also powered by SRP Studios and Shelby Row Productions, a digital content production agency. Please go sign up for that free consultation if you are interested in starting a podcast for yourself, your business, whatever it may be. We have hobbyist rates, okay? I usually work with, you know, I like to make some money with some big clients. That's the way that keeps the bills, you know, paid and the lights on. But I can, uh, I can also support a hobbyist, okay? It doesn't need to be hundreds of dollars a month to have a podcast. So reach out, email me at Derek at ShelbyRoadProductions.com or go to the ShelbyRoadProductions.com and click that consultation link and schedule one. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed that story. There's more stories to this that I'm going to get to in the next episode. It, it involves the mistakes we made and the things we forgot when going and leaving our gear behind. So now I'm just trying to get to the very end of the music. All right, cool. Take care, y'all. <laughs>